Hello everybody. Today we start our unit on China. And I want us to begin by thinking about this question, what factors in the 1800s allowed the West to advance ahead of China? As we go through this unit, I want you to think about that question and think about uh, what kinds of events were happening throughout the world and in East Asia that were having an impact on China's development. It's very important that we understand up until about 1800, China had been a very dominant global power, and in terms of life expectancy and commercial development, standard of living, legal and property rights, China was on par with, and in some cases surpassed, Western European countries. So just keep that in mind. Something happened uh, beginning around 1800, and we're going to look at that. Historians have looked at this, and I'll show you where historians have said, why did Europe grow rich and Asia did not? Another book talks about the Great Divergence, where you have this sort of two separate paths that divided, and Western Europe went one way, and East Asia and China went a different way. So we're going to talk about that uh, over the next uh, few things that we look at for this unit, and I just want you to be thinking about it because it is important. China had been extremely dominant, and uh, we think about China today, we think about China today as being a hub of commerce and trade and travel. Uh, we get a lot of manufactured goods from China today, and China is a very important global power in the 21st century. Well, it had been uh, before the 1800s, it had been a very important uh, part of the world then, too, but something happened. Something, some things happened that changed uh, the course of, of their development. So today we're just going to look at um, some context, how trade was conducted in China. Uh, it's important to understand these terms, Middle Kingdom, Tribute System, and then this source that I've assigned on Lord McCartney arriving in China. And so we'll look at that source, we'll talk about what you, you should be doing for the next part of the course. It's very important to understand that China viewed itself as the center of the world. And this is a concept we call the Middle Kingdom. China uh, was at the middle of the, of the world, and everything on the outside were barbarians. So China's at the center, the barbarians are all on the outside. You have to understand the tribute system and just what that entailed. So in order to trade with China, countries had to follow a certain series of steps. They needed to send an official delegation to the imperial court. They had to kowtow. And here's an example of kowtowing where individuals are bowing all the way down to the ground. They had to kowtow. They had to present their tribute, which ideally, to show respect, would be something of great value that that country had. And then, in return, the Chinese emperor would graciously accept their gift and then would give the trading country some items that were far more valuable than what uh, they had given the emperor. This was to display his superiority, his dominance, and his, his generosity and benevolence to give them such valuable things in exchange for what they had given him. And China had been doing this for centuries. The tribute system had existed for a long time, and all of the other East Asian powers that we look at in this course, uh, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam, all of them were tributes of China. So all those countries are doing this too. So let's just jump right in. Lord McCartney arrives in 1793. And I want you to think about what else was happening in the world around that time that could help us explain or help us provide some context um, for, for that event. This is the only image that I can find of, of Lord McCartney. Um, you can see that in the center here, 
this is the Chinese emperor right here, seated on the throne. And it's hard to see, but if you look carefully, you can see the outline of a man right here. This is Lord McCartney. He's got his arms out with a gift, and he's bending down on a knee, ready to provide a gift for the Chinese emperor. So I asked you to read this source, two edicts from the Qianlong Emperor on the occasion of Lord McCartney's mission. And uh, there are some questions that I want you to consider as you read this. So I asked this already. Think about this. 1793. What else was happening around that time that provides some context into this event? Uh, just if you if you think about this. The British are arriving in China in 1793. They had just lost the war in the American colonies um, not that long before. There's also a French Revolution taking place that began in 1789. There's also an Industrial Revolution in which England is leading the world so far in its industrialization. So all of those things are happening. And think about how those things could provide some context into this event where McCartney is going to China and he's asking to trade with um, the Qianlong Emperor. Uh, these are all the historical thinking skills right now. So what kind of document is this? It's an edict, but what is an edict? So that is an official proclamation from a government. What kind of language does the Qianlong Emperor use? Uh, he is being diplomatic here, and he's the leader of his country, and he's addressing a leader of another country. So the, the document has that kind of high diplomatic language. Um, but do pay attention to the fact that he doesn't necessarily treat the King of England as an equal. What do the British want from China? As you read this document, what do the British want? And that's very important that you identify the things that the British want from China. Uh, obviously, they want to open up trade with China. What else do they want? How did the Chenlong Emperor respond? Uh, you can probably guess that it's not favorable. His tone uh, tends to be condescending and not very favorable to the British demands. Um, think about this. If you're the king of England and you are reading these two edicts from the Qianlong Emperor, how are you going to respond? How are you going to react to the way that this uh, emperor has just treated you? I'll point out here on the map, just so you can see, um, I'll move myself around here so you can see a little bit better. So if you look here, one of the things the British want is to be able to trade more with China. They don't want to just be restricted to Macau or Guangzhou. And in your reading, it says Canton, which is the same place as Guangzhou. Those are the same places. So the British want even greater access than just these two areas. The British also say that they want to be able to have a representative in Beijing, which is all the way up here. So that's a, a, a much greater distance than these two port cities right here on the edge of the water uh, in China. Uh, but that's give you some idea of the geography of what's happening here. And then um, when I wanted to show you this image, when the British people heard that the Chinese, that the, when the British people heard that the British government was going to send a, del a delegation, an envoy, to China, uh, there was an artist who sort of made fun of this, because remember, the Chinese don't want anything from the British. They, they want silver, but there's no there are no goods that the Chinese want. And so you can kind of see this in this image here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is supposed to be satire, it's supposed to be satirical, but you can see that Lord McCartney is bending down on a knee, giving this document to the Chinese emperor, who doesn't seem interested at all in what's happening. You see the face 
facial expressions from the men behind them you don't really seem all that interested in what's going on you can compare that to the images of the british uh, representatives here who seem a little bit frightened and you can see that in this this artist's rendition he, he's making fun of the fact that the british think they have something that the chinese could want so what do the british bring and you can see that there's this mechanical toy here um, it's a horse and carriage you can see this rocking horse here looks like a bird in a cage here uh, these men are kowtowing by the way so you do see men kowtowing uh, lord mccartney is on a knee he's got an image here a miniature portrait of king george the third got some dice over here and it's really making fun of the fact that the British don't have anything that the Chinese want. So the Chinese are just not interested in opening up greater trade with the British, but the British are determined. I mean, they really are determined that they are going to find something that the Chinese want. And so uh, that's what we're going to talk about. And the next thing that we look at in the course, I want you to start reading excerpts from the Treaty of Nanjing because a war is going to start between British and the Chinese. And that's called the Opium War. And when that war starts, uh, it's going to begin in 1839. It'll end in 1842 with the signing of this treaty. And I want you to see just what the demands were that the British imposed on the Chinese after this defeat. Also keep reading through uh, the textbook chapter so that you know more context of what's happening around the world. That's all I got. So have a good day.